Time's up. Let's do this. We're in for a wild night. <laughs> Welcome, 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 everyone, to episode 193 of Born to be Wild, a wild and wild adjacent Hearthstone podcast, where we have fun hanging out with friends, talking about the wild and wild adjacent formats of Hearthstone and spotlighting members of the wild community. I'm your host, Electric Sheep City. It's great to be back this beautiful Friday evening here in Colorado. And it, it was beautiful. I like straight up went uh, t- into Boulder to like buy a, um, a a vinyl album today. And it was it was glorious. Like I, I was just wearing short sleeves. Oh, incredible. <sighs> incredible. So I'm joined tonight by two of my favorite people, starting with Hydralisk HS. Hydra, how you doing? I'm doing well. I'm a little jealous, I suppose. When I got off of work today, it decided to start doing this snow slash hail thing. I couldn't exactly tell which that it was, but it was coming down like crazy. So I was trying to like unpack stuff from the truck, get it in the house, and it was like absolute badness. And then I looked out the window maybe 30 minutes later after... It had all happened, and there's this field across the street from my house, and it's just white, like completely white. Went and did some things. Ten minutes later, it was all gone. It was green again. The grass was green once again. So, I don't know. I guess I should be thankful for the water, and so will the farmers. But how are you doing? Schmoopy Daddy! Um, I'm, I'm doing good. It's it's starting to feel... It's starting to feel... Sh- springy here in orange county new york uh pretty soon uh as schmoopy is excited uh to find out we're gonna be you know pulling spring onions which are these little tiny little things out of the out of the ground and just chewing them in our yard and uh and it's 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 a little bit muddy and it's a little bit wet uh and little piles of snow everywhere but no we're we're we're, we're, we're doing all right we're doing good cool good to hear well For those of you joining us for the first time, welcome aboard. Let me briefly explain how this show works. We record this podcast live every Friday evening at twitch.tv slash borntobewildhs, and the video version of this podcast is then posted to YouTube shortly thereafter. Audio versions are also distributed to all podcast apps. However, you are watching, listening, or absorbing via osmosis, this podcast today thank you yes you content plug shrimpy daddy before we get into the main topic of the show i'd like to say a quick thank you to shakuna and the other patrons of our show your support means the world to us if you enjoy this content please like subscribe and comment this on this video on youtube Another simple way to support the show is to leave a review on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or your podcast platform of choice. If you're watching live on Twitch, we've got some awesome emotes that you can unlock by subscribing to the channel. This is free if you use Amazon Prime. There are also emotes you can unlock completely free just for following. Born Be Wild merch. Picture of my wife. Here's a link to the shop for our main website. Finally, if you'd like to support the show financially, you can join our Patreon for as little as $1 per month. We have channels in the Discord that are unlocked by subscribing to Patreon, where you can see the show coming together each week. Check it out. If you'd like to interact with us personally, please join our Discord, a free, amazing online community of friends all across the world who love talking about Wild Hearthstone. Links to all this stuff and more can be found on our website, which is www.bornbewildhs.com. How was your week, Sheep? My week was pretty kicking rad. Um, So Hydra and I uh, got to guest with uh, Tito Santana um, and Doc McButt on Bread and Butter, um, which is always a blast. Um, I've done a lot of work this week. Work, work. Um, My Mm -hmm. parents came and went last weekend, which is why I wasn't here last week. Uh, So thank you all for carrying on in my absence. and then, of course, today, Twist is back, and I've been <laughs> playing some Twist. I've twisted all the way up to Diamond 3, and then fell a little bit back down to Diamond 4, um, but uh, did most most of that before the show tonight. So now, 
hanging out, uh, almost done with uh, book three of um, The Expanse, Abaddon's Gate. Mm. Just about done with that thing. So now I'm just ready to talk some Hearthstone with my buddies. So Hydralisk HS, how was your week, friend? My week was really, really good. So as you had mentioned, we, uh, you and I had got on to Bread and Butter. That was a really fun experience going on with those guys. Uh, you've gone on before. This is my first time. So they did a bit of interview with me, which was cool. And then, um, yeah, it was just neat. Like we've had Tito on here before. And then I've been around Doc McButt just in the community for quite some time. But it was it was fun to actually have a conversation with him as well and like actually you know see someone face to face have those conversations so that was really neat it was a good time i appreciated it so shout out to those guys um i like you did a little bit of reading um i had finished finally another book to add to the list so uh, the adventures of tom sawyer is crossed off the list it's one of those things that i just never read when i was younger when i should have so it's done i think i was mostly done it last week but i crossed that one off i was done and then i began the sun uh oh ah, the sun also Rises by Ernest Hemingway. So it's his first novel, if I am stating that correctly, his first novel that he ever wrote. And I have had that book since I'm thinking I was like 22, something like that. I had bought, I purchased it because I loved Hunter S. Thompson and he always stated that Ernest Hemingway was one of um, the people that he looked up to and everything. So I went down this thing where I was like, oh, let's read all of Ernest Hemingway stuff. So I bought all his books and then just didn't read them. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you've had I, them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I found a box and I was like, oh, sweet. <laughs> so I have it. Also, the audiobook is free on Audible as well. So that's cool. So I'm finally reading The Sun Also Rises by Ernest Hemingway. And so I've completed five books so far. And my goal is to get 33 plus. I'm a little scared because if you sort of do the math, I'm on track for about 30 books this year, which is a little shy, but I've got plenty of time to make that up. We've only gone through two months of the year, so I can make it work. And of um, course, my goal for you is 44. Yeah, no pressure. your goal for me is 44. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, well, yeah, we'll see how that goes. That I Maybe I can do it. We'll see what happens and maybe go camping and bring some books camping. Now, my wife and I actually just book a camping trip for the family coming up uh, later this year in a couple months. So that'll be fun. Uh, I did play a bunch of Twist, though that format is that, I mean, it's rotated out into a new format, but I was playing a lot of Aggro Druid, which was fun. I know that Sheep is you know the the druid guy and i have not been so it was i felt like it it was a good way to get some druid win so i was doing that and i had a, a lot of a lot of good times doing that but now yeah she ironically what i had the most success with uh in in the last twist meta was rogue which you're the rogue guy so it's just kind of ironic we that go. we swapped well, it was kind of also too uh, where I was at, other people were playing a lot of... I was seeing a lot of aggro druid mirrors. Mm, so mm -hmm. it was kind of like, who could high roll or figure out how to trade or go face, put the other person on a clock. You know, like, it, it sort of became this battle of who knows how to do it better sort of thing. And you could sort of... If you had a lot of reps, you could figure out how to win the mirror. So that was cool. Yeah. I enjoyed that. And uh, then, of course, we have the new format, which we could talk about a little more later. Played some Zoo today. Not a lot. Just a few games, like, squeezed them in between after work and then when we started the show and <laughs> uh, won a couple. So that was cool. I just wanted to see what was up. I faced only Warriors for some reason. So I guess that's a thing. Maybe they're Yay. trying to. Yeah. Mm, a little <laughs> bit of a thing. Yeah. But uh, we can talk about that more later. Shmoopy sure. Daddy, how was your week? My week was good. My Shmoopy update is that uh, we, we were a little bit, we were bracing ourselves because like after coming off of a week basically on vacation, um, you know, home with his dad, going to be a little bit 
off schedule, um, sending him into school. And uh, sure enough, his, his teacher said, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm prepared for the worst. And I, I understand that uh, all my students are going to be off schedule today, but we'll get back in a rhythm. It's going to be OK, but I'll, I'll definitely be a little lenient for the morning. And uh, he stood up on a table and called his classmates and his teachers butt cheese. But after that, he's had a fantastic Mood. week. Butt cheese. Uh, butt cheese, yes. He, after that, he's had a fantastic week, and he's been very well behaved, and he's been, uh, he's been sort of getting into a groove and being good at school. And uh, that's the deal we made with the devil. Like, okay, just be good at school. Uh, if you want to be a holy terror, you know, do it at home. So uh, we're taking that. Cool. We're accepting that. We're we're good with that. Uh, and uh, as far as uh, you know, uh, Hearthstone goes, um, today's the first, which means I attempt to hit Legend, uh, and I did it. I came in at level at uh, rank sixty eight. Um, only played Wild today. Have not tried. Hooray! Have not tried Twist yet. Uh, might skip Twist today and do Twist tomorrow because I didn't really like Classic. Uh, mm. I liked parts of Classic, but I think mostly what I liked about Classic was beating up the bots in Classic and not actually playing Classic itself. <laughs> so I might I might just pass up Classic and like go for Nax tomorrow. It's Nax tomorrow. Yeah, Nax is tomorrow. Yeah. Undertaker, Undertaker is just gonna. Be maybe incredible. I just look for it. Maybe I just go yeah. like Face Hunter. Maybe I do Face Hunter like a little bit before I go to bed tonight. Like maybe while I'm watching One Piece, and then swap to un- just put in Undertaker tomorrow and just see how the, the deck changes. I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I would recommend Zoo over Face Hunter. Um, mm-hmm. It just has a better matchup into the field of of what seems to be popular lately. Um, That's fair. That's fair. I'll probably play Hunter anyway because it's going to be like three games. <laughs> fair. <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 I totally get that. As far as matchups go today, um, I don't think we're going to get into big details about uh, – I mean, my climb was very I, – I started with the pre deck that we highlighted with Hydra last week. Um, did well with that. Went like 14 and 5. Started seeing a lot of Rena mages and a lot of quest mage, and I was like – I don't really. I really just want to hit them in the face, so I swapped to stuff that hits them in the face. I played some pirate oh, yeah. rogue, I played some shadow priest, and then post D five, uh, did my thing where I was just like, all right, let me play Odin warrior, farm some aggro, and uh, and go from there. And I'd say like I'd have to go back and look, but I'd say the 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 mix was something like sixty forty aggro control, leaning towards aggro, which was wild. Hmm. Uh, what is wild? But uh, I, I faced a fair number of control mirrors, and I was auto conceding into quest mages. So, like, I, I, I ended with a record of twenty seven and twelve with Odin Warrior. Um, oh, wow. But again, Very three, four, five of those were quest mages that I was just like, nope, and I just left. Um, yeah. Why bother? My my final boss was a Reno Even Warrior. So, like, people are definitely oh, – we'll talk about it a little bit later because it's one of the, the, the show discussion topics about, like, what, what it means to eliminate the bots. But it was definitely a bigger grind today. I, I, I played many more games, and I lost about 10 percentage points on my win rate or, or more. Something, I think I probably ended up with, like, a 70% win rate, whereas I was, I've been, like, low 80s in previous months. But, you know, it was a more varied ladder experience, and it was more authentic. And uh, yeah, we should we should definitely get around to talking about about that. Welcome to the news. The news is so good. So the news is mostly good. There 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 uh, there are some lo- valleys as well as peaks, but we'll start with a peak. And that is that the eliminating the bots has definitely transformed the wild meta. Yeah. And in a way Good. that makes me real happy. <laughs> <laughs> so this was, uh, I took a little snippet of the uh, Tempo Storm report where, you know, uh, you know Marty in the opening remarks, uh, NHL fan, basically went through how like, okay, well, if you take all the bots out of wild and you start looking at the data, it's kind of amazing how it transforms 
which decks are considered good and which decks are just considered okay. And decks that we consider to be some of the best in the format, Reno Shaman, stuff like that, um, statistically start dropping. And stuff like Even Shaman, Pirate Rogue, um, Agro Priest, and the deck we actually highlighted last week. No, I didn't pay TS for this. The deck we highlighted last <laughs> week, uh, Miracle Priest, or what I call KVLT Priest, uh, is Tier 1. Tier so, 1. So, Tier 1. Look at that. Meta Breaker. Um, and, and these are considered the Tier 1 decks. They're effective. They're fast. They're aggressive. This is a sheep meta. And then just as a, like a little, just to toot my own horn a little bit, uh, uh, Paquito. Um, well, before I do that, I'll, I'll toot Sheep's horn a little bit. Top of tier two is Holy Wrath Paladin. I mean, you, you've been saying, hey, feels good. Hydra, you should play it, right? And yeah. that's, a get, that's a deck that has been highlighted on this show in the pa- within the past couple, you know, month or so. And it's good. Not only that, the next deck up, Skipper Warrior. Now they're highlighting yeah. the um, Bladed Gauntlet version, which mm. is a deck I've talked about. I think on here as just like, hey, here's a weird deck that you could try. Well, it turns out it's <laughs> it's close to tier one. It's like low <laughs> tier two. Um, but Skipper Warrior also encompasses the deck that I play um, in the Tempest Storm report. They talk about how like, yo, yeah, no, you're using Skipper and Armor Smith and basically either capitalizing on Bladed Gauntlet combos. Or uh, Odin to farm the best the the tier one decks and and aggro and, and move up from there and mm-hmm. right after that is fatigue seed lock so like it, it's all decks that we've been sort of talking about that have been sort of around the fringe um, and then it's a bunch of aggro decks that is just like yeah that's the stuff we play so it was just very reaffirming to look at and just be like oh yeah this show knows what it's talking about that's kind of cool. <laughs> um, and it is also kind of cool just to see. Um, I don't know. It's just it's just interesting to see that how how the decks being reflected reflect at least the experiences that I've had as far as like, well, this feels good. Uh, this this doesn't feel as good. This looks good. I don't know about this. This seems like this is insulated by being at a high MMR. Uh, that sort of thing. Um, so my climb was the most varied I've seen probably in years. It was probably a sprinkling of this plus stuff that you'd say is tier one. I'd like to note on this list, you don't see even warrior because Tempo Storm put even warrior way down in tier three. Um, wow. It's it's in theory not farming, I guess. Um, it's a little worse into the control matchups and it's not farming some of the aggro matchups as consist like like even shaman as consistently as something like skipper warrior would. Um, Skipper Warrior has full access to Bear of and other, you know, yeah. stuff that, and more draw and like, just like if you run out of gas and that's kind of the feeling I've always had about even Warrior. It's just like, okay, well I, sometimes I have the stuff, but sometimes I don't. Um, and also against control decks, uh, even Warrior can't really just do one big pop the way that one of the Skipper decks can. Like mm-hmm. I can just hit you for 59 out of nowhere. Once I get Odin down, I can hit you for 59. Um, that doesn't right. really happen with even warrior. It's usually more like I'll hit you for twenty. Next turn I'll hit you for fifteen. Can right. you can you put up with that or not? Uh, so even yeah. warrior is way down at the bottom. Go ahead. What are you gonna say, sheep? So the top eight that they're listing here, with the exception of miracle priest, which I, I want to get reps in, but you know I've, I've, I've haven't yet. Yeah, haven't yet. It's on my list. Um, the top eight, with that one exception, I've got two hundred plus games with every single one of those decks. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> and have had a blast with every one. So, like, uh, Schmoopy Daddy, you mentioned that this is a sheep meta at at one point. Um, Smorky. Yeah, this is <laughs> totally my meta. Like, seven of the top eight decks I've played extensively they're they're just so much fun um even shaman not as much lately just because i've had so many games of that in the past that i'm you know have been seeking a little bit more variety but even shaman pirate warrior aggro priest holy wrath paladin skipper warrior fatigue questline warlock uh mind rogue i have at least 200 games with all of those like wow so much fun <laughs> The only one I really haven't played other than I did do the the Miracle 
Miracle Priest is fun. Um, nowhere near 200 games, I would say that, definitely. Uh, but I have not played, I never did play a lot of Mind Rogue because I've got this thing hardwired into me that if there's something I hate, I don't play it. So sure. I, I just haven't played Mind Rogue just because it wasn't something that made me happy. I mean, I'm sure the people that are winning are really happy. Braxius got me onto that one and being able to just like OTK someone with Renathal on turn four, turn five or six pretty consistently um, feels pretty nice. Uh, But into an aggro lineup, I don't know that it's what I would be playing so much like it can still win those games. But I'd be playing something else. Uh, case in point, most of what I've been playing so far this season, it's the first, is Holy Wrath Paladin in Wild. Yeah. That's, I think I, I swapped at some point. At some point I swapped from, right, because I've seen the Reno Mages, I swapped from, mm-hmm. <clears throat> excuse me, the Miracle Priest into, um, first. at first it was Pirate Rogue, because I was just like, ah, mm-hmm. I want to play some Pirate Rogue. And then I was like, I felt like I was g- gassing out a little bit. So I swapped to Shadow Priest and like Shadow Priest into the Mine Rogues felt like free. Like it, it, it felt oh, well, so cool. free. It was it was it was goofy. And in fact, um Heaven's Door was spectating me in chat while I was doing that little section with like the Shadow Priest and like I was queuing into quest mages and like decent opener and they were conceding. Or I'd be getting mine rogues down to four health on turn five and like I've got a thirsty drifter up. You're either gonna swing the weapon or you're not, buddy. Um, like, you know, it, 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 it does feel like kind of a weakish option, especially after, um, I suggested it to Shmoopy Mommy, um, mm-hmm. as a climbing deck last meta and her performance was, she was doing okay with it, but at the same time she was just like, ah, it's not quite what I'm looking for. Whereas I guess, yeah. you know, I went you sheep. I, I can't really play even shaman as a serious climb anymore. Cause, um, I start tilting when I feel like I'm limited by the reach mm. of the deck or the options the deck has. I haven't touched it in a while, in all honesty. I think there's been times where maybe I was close to a rank floor and I was like, oh, let's just play that because I know. That'll get you off yeah. the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. But it, in general, I, yeah, I haven't touched it in quite some time. Yeah. I'd, I'd say with, Mine Rogue, I'm about like 50-50 into aggro, be it Shadow Priest, Pirate Rogue, etc. You just have to play it differently, right? Like you're yeah. you're trading with a lot of the the different bursts and, and things because let's be real, your real burst is the combo, which deals 32, 35 if you get to swing the weapon face, right? Um, so I'm about 50-50 into aggro with, with Mine Rogue, but 50-50 is not like a big climbing stat <laughs> no no so yeah no i it it, it it eliminating the bots it's worth saying and, and we're going to talk about mm-hmm. the bots elsewhere in hearthstone mm-hmm. uh later in the show but like it's i think it's worth saying that like the eliminating the bots in in wild has made a difference have i seen some even shaman bots sh- still sure um but it has transformed the experience and uh and uh, that's noted here and i think interesting Agreed. Well, moving on from the wild meta report, we've got some new cards that will be in wild as well as standard uh, very soon. And Schmoopy Daddy has guided us through a little bit of um, some of the highlights pertaining to wild um, of the uh, cards that have been revealed in the past week. So starting with Playhouse Giant, take it away, Mr. Daddy. Sure, the Playhouse Giant sort of hit towards the end of the neutrals and kind of got wild circles sort of on fire. Um, People were like, whoa, what deck does this go in? Um, The initial, I think, knee-jerk reaction was, is this a Miracle Rogue deck? Another giant for Miracle Rogue? And as people quickly pointed out, with Secret Passage not being drawn technically, mm-hmm. um, and that's most of how you cycle through the deck, it makes this a little awkward. I'm still not convinced this won't be a one of in that list, especially because there's enough room in it where there's there's some flex spots where you say, well, maybe I run Zephyrus, maybe I run Hearthstone Brew, maybe I run 
but you're going to see somebody run Playhouse Giant. Uh, worth mentioning, it's also a mech, so it can be mm-hmm. reduced. Uh, for our audio listeners, I'm sorry. It's a 20-mana mech that is an 8-8 that costs one less for each card you have drawn this game. And so, the first place mm-hmm. that, that kind of comes to my mind for Playhouse Giant is the more giant version of a uh, fatigue quest line warlock okay. um, you know because because there's the like fatigue version and there's the kind of like giant version with the like five five that's cheaper for for damage that you take on your turn and flesh giant and that whole deck just cycles like whoa like consistently yeah. playhouse giant feels like honestly i i don't know that i'd like sub it in for for flesh giant but it seems like another like natural fit for that deck because it does cycle so heavily. It might like flesh giant is not always the easiest to get active. Um, especially since it has some anti synergy with the, um, Oh my goodness. What's the card that I'm, that I'm thinking of the one drop, the librarian. No, no, no. The one drop that, uh, swaps armor health for armor. Mm, Crystallizer. Crystallizer. Yeah, oh, it has yeah, some yeah, anti-synergy yeah. with Crystallizer because once you put armor up and then you damage the armor, it's not actually right. discounting the Flesh Giant. So mm-hmm. if now you just care about drawing cards, it's interesting. I hadn't even thought about Giant's Warlock because I thought this was too slow for that. But looking at it, I, I could possibly see somebody being like, let me sub this in for Flesh Giants and see how it goes. And it doing okay. Um, Do we know the- that it works when... So say you technically draw a card but it gets burned i assume it would not i would assume it would not too but i'm not i i'm not entirely sure because like you're still drawing but it's not technically you don't get it but you still drew it so i i don't know it doesn't count as a draw for um things like the um demon hunter quest line and stuff like that so i don't think that it would count as a a draw because instead of drawing it into your hand it's just kind of like you don't draw it, you just toss it aside, essentially. But it's yeah. interesting that you mentioned Questline DH because I think that's a it, this is definitely a nice fit for that. Um oh, yeah. you draw a ton of cards and you also run um Gaslight Gatekeeper. So you can have a nice thick hand and you can cycle that hand right back into your deck and also draw it right back. And you're drawing so many cards when you're doing that process without actually going all that deep in your deck that these can get pretty cheap pretty quick and pretty easily. And so that that seems to be where I see some people going with it. Even hearing some people think about maybe chucking the outcast package altogether just to mm. just cycle harder and just work on let's just do brutes and playhouse giant, which is gonna be an experiment people do, which is interesting. So this was like the first card I think that really made a splash that was interesting card worth highlighting, has wild implications. Um because I have sort of generally written down from the neutrals here. Um, most of the neutrals I saw this week looked like either busted and or good arena cards, like individual oh, yeah. effects mm-hmm. that are like neat, but uh, maybe not having a whole lot of synergy. Um, I don't, I didn't call up the, the card in mind for an image for sheep to pull up, but like there's a six mana dragon, divine shield, rush, life steal. It's a one, one. The battle cry says that it swaps stats with one of your, with, with I think one of your opponent's minions. Is it just opponent? I forget if it was enemy minions or if it was any minion. I think it's, I think it's a minion, minions. but I, I I can't speak definitively. Uh, regardless, that effect right. in arena, like it, it, you have something big down, all of a sudden you're like a huge tempo, huge health swing. It's like, whoa, absolutely busted. Could get banned in arena because it's like it's that kind of feels bad kind of card. Mm-hmm. Are we ever going to play that in wild constructed? No. Maybe no. somebody does. Maybe somebody uh, demented does because it's wild. I mean, but somebody it's like... demented will will find something to just like play around <laughs> with in general. But like, as far as immediate impact, uh, n- n- no. But it's a strong card. Like situationally, yeah. it's a strong card. Situationally, yeah. it's a strong card, and like, li- like you were saying, it, in, in a vacuum, oh, the you effect just... is strong. Yeah, Hydra. Oh, no, just like there's going to be situations where you're discovering cards and you see this one and it's going to be the one you're going to want to grab. It's not something you're going right. to want to actually put into your 30 card list, but you get that chance to snag it in that perfect situation. You're going to take it every time. So, 
And, and, and do we cool. maybe run yeah. it in like Reno Shutterwalk Shaman? Probably not, but like maybe. <laughs> Probably not because you're making, then you're giving your opponent 6-6 six, six in stats because right, right, you're swapping that stat. You're you're swapping it, but but by that point, maybe, you know, <laughs> they're frozen by turn proofed. nine. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're <laughs> it's frozen. It's turn nine or or path. So maybe uh, I may play around with it now. I may be that psychopath like Uriel saying, <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, of course, of course. Um, <clears throat> But I, 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 there's a bunch of cards like Sheep that that are neutral. Sheep the demented psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> Who saw it coming? No one. Um, everyone. <laughs> everyone. <laughs> <laughs> this is a wild podcast. You have to be a little bit twisted to be on this thing. Um, but <laughs> wild and uh, wild adjacent, twisted. Wild and wild adjacent. There you go. That seems to be like the theme of the neutrals to me. And it makes sense because it's the first expansion. Um, The neutrals can't be too strong or too synergistic because it's first of a a four set meta. If they're too dominant, they'll just just overrun everything else. Um, And things will get stale really quickly. We saw that when we had Castle of Nathria. Now, that was Mm -hmm. was still a five set meta, but the neutrals were so strong that the flavor of those neutrals basically overcame the entire set. It was all, do you have Brand, do you have Theo? Yeah. <laughs> D- Kale for a minute, and they're like, all right, we'll get rid of Kale Thos. Right? Who could have Who could have foreseen this? Right? Um, but there are some other neutrals that stand out. Maybe not for Standard, but for us specifically. The next one I'd like to highlight is Treasure Distributor. Um, Ooh, yeah, boy. Sheep is excited for this. It's a one mana pirate. It's a one two. And it says after you summon a pirate, give it plus one attack. Now we already have a card in rotation now that has given us some idea of how this would perform in Arms Dealer, which was only for undeads. But pirates are a much more common tribe than undeads in the wild format. Mm-hmm. And this card, uh, like. Sheep, can, Hydra. I'll, let's let's pun to the Hydra. Hydra, can you imagine some fantasy openers with this sucker on turn one? Well, I know what what Sheep wants to do, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, this can slot into almost any pirate deck at this point because of the fact that it is a one mana pirate. And we're always looking for really Cheap. good one mana pirate. Uh, for 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 any deck, right? For for our pirate uh, rogues, anything. I know druids I, and sheep is just. I'm not even gonna spoil it. I will let sheep <laughs> Thank have you. it because he's drooling. So I, I will let sheep talk about <laughs> what he wants to do with this in druid. <laughs> so you you know how how I do my aggro druid. I'm I'm an embiggen enjoyer, like 586 percent. So embiggen, maybe two of them. Treasure distributor, pairs you brigand or two. Those are no longer two twos from your hand. Those are three twos from your hand. Uh, patches comes from your deck. Maybe he's a two one. Maybe he's a four three. Maybe he's a six five. Like. That, I mean, it, it just makes the high roll even better. And th- yeah. that's exactly what I love about Aggro Druid in general. And this just increases the density of pirates. So it increases the possibility um, and the the, the um, percentage of that, that high roll, as well as making that high roll even higher with that. After you summon a pirate, you give it plus one attack. It's a one mana, one, two pirate. Good stats. Good effect good tribe like what's not to love about this treasure distributor and, Can I and, point and, out and something? <laughs> yes they, please they can't even like a lot of times you play a one mana pirate in wild and they have one health right so yeah the enemy whether it be a druid or a mage or a rogue they can coin and they can kill it right mm-hmm. this has the two health so it's gonna most likely survive into the next turn and you're gonna get another proc off yep. of it because of that that health that it has so best case like sheep's talking about in biggin is nuts but even if you're playing this just in a pirate rogue where your parachute brigands come out and your patches comes out they're not going to be able to kill this on their on their turn it'll survive into the next turn you can get something else out it's just 
if they can't kill it, it gets out of control. And this just makes the fast decks even faster, like right off the get go. And as is well established in this podcast, specifically with Shmoopy Daddy, nobody catches pirates. Nobody catches pirates. Um, so yeah, this looks this looks like it's going to speed up and uh, and 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 be sort of nasty in general in your fast pirate aggro decks. Um, which, honestly, if those are our aggro overlords and that's the best aggro deck in the format, I don't hate it. They're a little right? bit. It's a little bit more fragile than totems, um, and, mm-hmm. and which which unfortunately is going to be the theme of the next card that we have. Let's see the next one. The next one is Sing Along Buddy, which is a two mana one for mech. Your hero power triggers twice. Right. So um, this is going to be a fun little card to slot in a whole lot of stuff. Uh, oh, I think huh. you slot this in even paladin because now your even paladin is odd paladin. I think you slot <laughs> this in. I think you slot <laughs> this in all sorts of. <laughs> you slot this in all sorts of even decks. U- Uther paladin. Ooh. Yes, there's actually yes, actually there is a combo if you look at it. If you do uh, garrison commander and sing along buddy, um, now you have a serious combo in wild because you can trigger the hero power twice and get all four horsemen in one turn. So Raza Priest, Raza Priest, absolutely. Uh, even mm. Shaman. Oh, hey, oh my god! Even Raza DK, Priest. even DK. Sure, I, I, this is going to see. I think a lot of play, especially because we do manipulate the hero power um, costs so often, and we do have even decks, even Hunter. Um, this mm, is going to see some. Yeah. play. this is going to see a lot of play. This is going to see a lot of experimentation. Um, how effective it's going to be, eh, we're going to have to see, but, uh, it looks cool. I can't wait to get my hands on it. Cause this is the kind of thing where like, um, deck builders are going to have fun, like pairing this with garrison commander and seeing what we can do with it. So no lies. I missed this one whenever it was announced. So I'm doubly glad that you mentioned it here because <laughs> even DK, even Hunter, even Paladin, like these are all decks that I've tried and had varying degrees of success with, with success with specifically even DK. Like I've had a lot of success with that and sing along buddy is just a natural fit there. And th- this looks like so much fun. Two mana, one, four, that four health is super impactful because you want that persistent effect. And, like it's just fantastic. four health. Like why? Yeah. Why? Yeah. It'll get nerfed to three butt. health. It'll get nerfed to three health. I, <laughs> will it? It's going mean, to be, it's gonna they, be they unplayable in standard. The, and they typically <laughs> nerf for standard. Exactly. So so will they nerf this? I I kind of don't think so, because I don't think it's going to be a meta tyrant in our format to, to get the, the, the nerf. It'll be super strong in our format, but it's not going to be a meta tyrant in our format that'll obnoxious. get the nerf. Yeah. And they heavily nerf and and balance in general around standard. And this is not going to be a problem in standard. So I think sing along buddy is kind of here to stay and I'm kind of here for it. We'll see. We'll definitely see if it's one of those cards that's in every deck and, and it's just everywhere that I can see them, them touching it. But like you said, there, there is a good point that in, in standard, it may not actually be a problem because they don't have, you know, the whole Gen and Baku sort of thing going mm-hmm. on. So, I mean, it's, I, it's, I guess time will tell. Comes, it, I think it's OP, though. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I don't know if hero powering is and I'm going to say this with even Shaman being one of the best decks in the format. I really don't know if hero powering is necessarily the strongest use of mana in the wild format at this point. Oh, it definitely um, isn't. Hero power is kind of what you do when you don't have anything better to do. Hero, unless your quest is to hero power or whatever it is, right? Like you're not even shaman. Of course, you're, you're hero powering every single turn. You want things like reduce your thing from below, all that sort of thing. Like that, that is what you're doing. And if it's triggering twice, I guess it's going to... Summon more totems, get that down. Even the thing from below is even easier, right? Uh, but <laughs> even tra- easier. traditionally, traditionally, you're using your hero power when you have nothing really good in your hand. You're shoring up all your mana, 
that sort of stuff. But I do think there are going to be some places where this is super strong. So I, it's I, that I'm big gonna, butt that it's got. If, if they do touch it, I think they're just going to touch the butt. <laughs> I'm going to love it in uh, in Raza Priest. I'm going to love it in, uh, in, in even Paladin because those aren't decks that exist that are good. And so just like getting the opportunity to try it out and like dropping sing along buddy and then dropping void touch to tendon and then like going from there yay that's call that's to arms be fun hero power this will come out call to arms you can hero power oh yeah call to yeah that's what i mean it's perfect for evil even paladin for that reason evil paladin um, yeah <laughs> well paladin got a couple of pretty interesting cards including painter's sure. virtue and flash sale Sure. So these two stuck out to me as being some of the stronger cards that were revealed today, question mark. Um, mm-hmm. Painter's Virtue, lifesteal after your t- hero attacks. Uh, it's a four mana, two, three weapon that gives plus one, plus one to your opponent's hand. Uh, to sorry, your hand. hand. To your hand, excuse me. No to one would ever play that it's, card. No one play ever play that card. No, no, no. So I it's buffing, it's buffing your stuff. I'd play a weapon that buffs my opponent's hand. I know. My, it's my derangement. Does my brain is going the wrong direction. <laughs> too much wild. Too much wild. It's all too good. much wild. Too much wild. Too much playing wild. If we um, didn't give you a hard time, we wouldn't be doing our jobs. <laughs> 1,000% correct. Uh, once again, giving hand buff Paladin more lifesteal. Um, and we already have a bunch mm-hmm. of deputization aura. Which also sort of dovetails into why I really like Flash Sale as well. As well, Flash Sale summon a one a a one two mech with the Divine Shield and Taunt. Give your other minions plus. Uh, sorry, give your minions plus two plus. Uh, sorry, plus one plus two. I completely scuffed that. Um, so basically, the the like the little Anoyotron stat line just like send that to all Hello. the minions. Um. And it says give your minions plus one, plus two. So the little robot that you summon, the little Anoyotron, is also going to get that buff. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It doesn't say Just other. like Arbor Up. So you're looking, yeah. at a, you're looking at four mana, make a two, four Divine Shield taunt while also buffing everything else on your board while also sending that token. Again, if we're playing, let's assume that we're playing like hand buff Paladin or something like that. Uh, sending the token to the far left of your stuff, right? Or no, to the right, so that it's not in the way of deputization aura. So it is actually right. the last thing down the line. Um, mm-hmm. This looks kind of good too, to me. So in yeah. conjunction with a uh, sing-along buddy in particular, um, sing-along buddy is even. Both mm-hmm. of these are four mana, also mm-hmm. even. Um you know, I, I don't know that an even paladin we'd necessarily play painter's virtue, but I think we might with flash sale. You know, because we've got flash sale, we've got um, call to arms, which is also four mana. So we we call to arms on coin three or four if we're not on coin, and then we flash sale the the next turn. I mean, that just seems good. Like a two four plus give give all of your minions on board plus one plus two. Uh, that seems good as long call as you're to, like planning to go yeah. wide and call to arms. I, I don't know that flash sale is going to be played in standard. I think it will be, uh, it could be in our format with, for people who yeah. are experimenting like yours truly. Um, and I've experimented with, you know, I've played around with some even paladin in, in the past and with these in particular flash sale and uh sing along buddy, like we talked about before, I think I'll experiment and play around with some some even paladin again in the future. Yeah, I think um, it, since paladin is shifting away from secrets and towards auras, um, Crusader's aura is one of the I think probably the best cards paladin has. Period. Right now. Yep. And so actually, I think flash sale does a good job of making stuff stick, making those mm-hmm. eggs stick that that standard paladin loves to play and also lets them attack. But now you let them attack with Crusader's Aura up. Um, I think it's going to see some some standard play. And But uh, for our format, like you were saying, call to arms into sing-along buddy or double sing-along buddy, and then you're so playing your hero power. One's going to stick. You only need one. You don't need both, but mm-hmm. one's going to stick. Hero power flash sale is... 
a hell of a curve. Like you're huh. you are really cooking with that. And then if you can get that stuff to stick and then throw up Crusader's aura, now you're really cooking with gas. Um, yep. Spooky, Propane. spooky, spooky, spooky. Um, generally with Paladin, they're doing a lot of neat aura stuff. They're doing stuff like, hey, draw uh, three mana, two four draw or two three draw a minion with divine shield and an aura. Or your aura, you have four mana, four four. Your auras ask uh, last for one turn longer. And and those are auras in play in your hand or in your deck. So if you discover mm. a, an aura subsequent to that, it doesn't have it. But if you've got an aura anywhere in general in your deck hand play, it it gets increased. Um, and then of mm-hmm. course, the seven mana aura um, play a six drop last yeah, for three turns. Six drop for free. Yeah. Yeah. And and the auras have looked strong. Th- those all seem like a lot of fun and that particular aura more more standard than than our format but like extend auras if we're playing a ton of auras because they're like super duper strong then maybe we play that in even paladin right because call to arms won't yeah. pull it out is a battle cry we play call we, we play uh, crusader's aura we play flash sail like <laughs> All of a sudden, we're like going for face for a ton. We're buffing stuff. I I can see a road to, at the very least, like a, an experimental deck, if not like a meta deck. Yeah. It sounds super fun regardless. I, I want to try it even if it doesn't actually end up being meta. It just sounds a lot of fun to play with these new cards. They sound really powerful. Yeah. I, I it's it's It seems like a, uh, at least the class cards that I've seen have at least seemed interesting. I don't know how strong yeah. they are yet, but they seem interesting and like I'd want to play them. And they're probably going to be serviceable because, again, it's it's an old myth that that new cards don't impact wild. They, they break wild. It's, yeah. it's, it's it's that's ancient. Yeah. Uh, that's that's yeah. from that's from like Rastakhan. Like that stuff. The like, ancient like now they, myth. <laughs> that, that, that doesn't. <laughs> We absolutely get impacted by new cards, and we absolutely steal ideals from standard and. Um, Along those lines, I think I want to talk about, uh, let's do Warrior first. Before we move on to, to Warrior, sure. um, kind of a, a general thing regarding um, Ooh, the graphic. signatures for um, the, the, the new set. So all of the signatures are Dr. Boomified versions of the characters. So the example that was given, uh, Scott the Bot, um, quote tweeted Emic uh, regarding uh, Pipsy the p- paint hoof, which is not super interesting for our format, but um, a seven mana four, four death rattle, summon a random divine shield rush and taunt minion from your deck. Not at all mech looking, um, but the signature card looks mechified. All of the signature cards look mechified. So Ridiculous Hat uh, responded that all the SIGs are Dr. Boomified versions of the characters, which I think is pretty cool flavor, um, especially yeah. since we have like a lot of Dr. Boom flavor um, uh, archetype in Warrior, which is exactly what we're getting to. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. See the connection there? Um <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm not going to so, highlight any any individual warrior cards either. Like I, I we got we got a Necrium blade for warrior uh, it, it, with miniature eyes, so you get like a one one version of the weapon in your hand that you can break the weapon with. Um, but I think mm-hmm. without without Snowfall Graveyard, it's kind of hard to abuse in warrior. Uh, we do have yeah, some it's, fun it's a standard st- card. For sure. Yeah, we have mm-hmm. well, we yeah. have some fun stuff. They they printed a nice mech that goes along with it. I forget if it deals eight damage or if it has taunt. It's like a it's like a better taunt basically. It splits randomly. It wasn't a big enough deal for me to highlight it as a card individually, but just like we have some interesting death rattle synergy cards. We might play some iron juggernaut as a treat. Okay. Ooh. I like Shuff- iron juggernaut. I like treats. <laughs> Shuffle in a couple of, you know, ten mana ten mana bombs, turn off some Renos, have some fun with that. There's a Uh huh. I love me some Iron Juggernaut. One of the best a- golden animations to this date still. <laughs> Agreed. Yes. Agreed. 100%. We got a, a fun five mana spell that deals your, that uh, 
summons your highest cost minion from your hand and uh, deals five damage to it, which puts Mechathune in shield shatter range. So like, oh, there's going to be some stuff in Warrior that we are going to cook. Um, is any of it outright powerful enough that I'm going to highlight it individually? No, but it looks fun and cool. And there's even some interesting like, you know, I I think it's it's either two or three mana draw two taunt minions, uh, so more taunt tutoring. Um, there's a really cool two mana spell I'm I'm excited for. That's uh, two mana gain six armor. It costs zero if you have no armor built up yet, which is a great uh, way to enable shield shatter or mm-hmm. your sto- your or your stone skin armorers <laughs> on curve. Uh, that's pretty good, right? Gain armor, draw two cards, play your two two. Like that's that seems like really strong in a card in a deck like Skipper Warrior. I think you find room for a card like that. So I didn't find anything like that, that just like jumping like this is busted and wild in Warrior. So just generally, Warrior looks cool. We're gonna cook with Warrior. Yeah, w- Warrior looks cool, and a lot of it yeah. is kind of death rattle mech stuff. And yeah. of course, we have the Doctor Boom hero in our format, which you which, can trigger. It's your power twice now, by the way. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You, you can, and of course, that Doctor Boom hero has a persistent effect. And since it's a hero, it means it always happens going forward. Um, all your mechs have rush, so if you're playing some like mech death rattle stuff. Um, all of your mechs having rush is super duper relevant because then you can trade on board in kind of the opposite of value trade um, in order to get those death rattles to go off because those are pretty powerful death rattles. Um, so death rattle mech warrior uh, seems to be kind of what, what standard is leaning towards. And with Dr. Boom, the hero in our format i'm not going to say it's going to be good but it's going to be something that like we can kind of play around with and kind of test the waters and if they print you know a a, a lot more things particularly um you know in in, in this standard year you know they've kind of set the laid the groundwork laid the foundation um for these death rattle mechs uh with this set um potentially we could have something going forward this is uh, uh, again we've, we've mentioned this in the past, uh, a few times with in wild, it's it's more of an accumulation of things, right? This is we, we've got the Doctor Boom hero, we've got now these mech death rattle synergies, we've got like a lot of mechs in general. This is just kind of another layer. If we Timeline continue to get some of those mech, de- yeah, exactly, accelerator for five hundred eighty six percent. So if we continue to get these kind of like mech death rattles in particular um, kind of pushed forward in this standard year with, with, with this being the, the foundational set um, or in subsequent uh, sets, things don't rotate in our format. So this could, th- this is something to look out for in the future in wild. 100%. I love when there's 100%. the start of a new thing, really. Like if, if this creates its own sort of new archetype for us in in wild that's very exciting very exciting because i like to see the new things the newest thing recently really being that that priest that we talked about last week like that's super cool to me Mm -hmm. and if they're going to introduce something like this and it gets built on and it's something that we actually see in our meta love it cool yeah the uh the last class we got cards for was druid now Um, um, d-r-u-i-d Yes, yes. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, spell. Druid. Druid. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's the spell damage stuff. So, like, before we got the spell damage stuff, we got we got Ensmallen, which was, like, this th- weird three-mana spell, <laughs> reduce a minion's attack by one, but also reduce its cost by one, um, which is, like, it, it, it's, like, well, how do we... I'm looking at it as like a okay. Well, how do we like design ramp into druid without expressly doing ramp for the sake of doing ramp? Is how I kind of read the card, but it's like if it costs less, it might be toxic. Toxic if it if it costs more, uh, it'd be unplayable. As is, it seems weird and unplayable. Um, we got a weird tradable card that's like if you play it, it refreshes mana crystals. It's a two mana two one. But like trading it ramps it up, but does it ramp it up by a mana crystal or, 
or t- so when you're trading it, are you just mana neutral at this point when, until you you play it? It's like it's weird and slow and funky. And uh, yeah, that and, that like wind up thing is something in general that they're pushing with this expansion that gotcha. might possibly be relevant for standard. I kind of don't think it will be. It it seems even slow for that format, and that's the the general reaction and like for there too. In the standard circles, yeah. So I haven't heard yeah, from there. What you're saying is we're all really confused as to what the heck Druid's doing with with the stuff right now. And uh-huh. well, we got a Jade Idol. We got a new Jade Idol that Geist can't get. It's a it's a it's a <laughs> one mana one two. Yeah, Jade. What is it? Statue. What is it called? Jade Display. D- Death Rattle. Display. Suffle, suffle, shuffle two more copies in, but they get plus one plus one. It's like if it was Battle Cry, it'd be interesting is for our format. Like, like Reddit too, will be like, is? "Here's the Jade Idol. They can't get Geisted," and they're gonna put it in their decks, and they're gonna realize like. No, I have to kill that for that to work. I'm not. I'm gonna leave it. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's and they're just weird. And I, I like. I I'm not gonna go into my review of the set on, that I posted on my Discord uh, because it's 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 not quite born to be wild friendly. But I wasn't complimentary of those three cards. I'm not either. That being said, and I love Druid, but I'm not complimentary of those cards at all. Not subscribing to this <laughs> these cards. No. All the stuff that Blister Guy revealed was really cool. The whole spell yeah. damage package. Sheep, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Because you were looking at the cards. Or Hydra, because you were watching the video. <laughs> yeah. So in general, like there's a location. Only costs one um, with three durability that gives you one plus one spell damage for that turn. That just seems like a Mali Druid kind of mm. addition waiting to happen especially if swipe actually does get discounted to three which it looks like it will be i think it will um i think it will too in general there's like alonius which is super cute (laughs) like there's a whole lot of spell damage druid stuff that in standard may or may not kind of culminate into a thing but we've had maligos druid in in wild before and this is just kind Mm -hmm. of another payoff and and kind of another like contributing factor to maligos the type deck in in druid as well so i'm curious to see both where that goes and if we're again that that kind of building upon thing that we were talking about that this is yet another thing that druid has like access to maybe eventually we cut Mally from Mally Druid and it's just like spell damage Druid, right? Yeah, we just do it um, with imps or something like that. I mean, if yeah. we also got, it's worth noting uh, amongst the new cards that was revealed. And again, if you haven't seen Blister Guy's video, go check it out. Um, on, it's I incredible. On Twitter. It's, it's good. Um, we got a, a four mana draw too, but the cost of that card is reduced uh, by one for each spell damage you have. And we have shattered reflections, so like we have a lot of minions, like like um, yeah. oh my goodness, we got well, the 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 imp, the 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 three mana zero seven imp, uh, trickster, street trickster, yeah, 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 yeah street yeah. trickster. Uh, we can print street tricksters all day in our format. Sure, let's do it. Um, mm-hmm. And 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 you've got these payoffs where you're drawing cards or you're. Or you're playing a spell, it's a three mana spell, and for like each damage that it deals, it reduces the mana of the next card that you play. Like you've got some like really intriguing cards that kind of dovetail into this spell damage package that really good players in Wild aren't sure what the heck you're supposed to do with them yet. But that being said, they're kind of doing weird, powerful things. So I, mm-hmm. I'm of the mind that it's almost like a stand, like 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 hold and wait, and see what standard yeah. does with them, and see if or or what or what the Chinese community does with it, and like just see what kind of weird stuff pops up, and then just enjoy. Because like it, it, there's a, I don't think it's gonna be, I don't think it's good enough that it's gonna be a meta tyrant, but it's intriguing enough that it could be good. <laughs> I think that playable. in in our format in in wild, as as sheep said, we have had Mally Druid before, but it it hasn't. It's been a while, right? So it's something that's mm-hmm. sort of come and gone, sort of you know gets forgotten about. But if it 
if it pops up again, I think it's it hasn't been around. It hasn't been a tyrant. It's been a long time. And maybe it's just been long enough that I'm not salty anymore. But I, <laughs> and I could I could regret saying this, but I'd be okay with with it coming back. You can you can totally come back and, and quote me on saying that I'm okay with it because I may change my mind. But I think it's been long enough that if we get a Mally Druid, that I'd be okay with it. And you know what? I would play it. And then maybe I can get some of my druid wins because <laughs> you still want those druid wins. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it, I, I, I've, it's your great I'm white whale. Not too happy when I've died to Melly Druid, <laughs> and I want to do that to somebody. I want to make someone else suffer. What, what, what are you at <laughs> with uh, ranked druid wins right now, Hydra? Um, so I just checked. I'm not logged into Hearthstone right now. It's like 294 mm-hmm. or something. Like it's not <laughs> oh, even 300. No. Yeah. I, oh, like, no. I, <laughs> we, we can totally get you there just with Aggro Druid like today. I, but I've I mean, got, not like, today. Thousands That's of wins but. in this game of Hearthstone, and my Druid hasn't even cracked 300. Yeah, it's funny. That's That's insane. Yeah, because oh. I never I I hated Druid when the, when the game like came out it, it it just it wasn't something I wanted to play. I lost to it a lot, and I was like, screw that stupid class, and I just never you played it. You would love Agro Druid with, with, with then, the new card. And, you would love uh, Agro Druid even more. Like that 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 is your play pattern. My my only real wins with the deck were like Token Druid, right? Right, where, right, um, yeah. You didn't like me. <laughs> That's how long ago it was. In it, yes, that was from you. But in all honesty, <laughs> I have probably the same amount of wins with Druid on Asia and EU, right? Because that deck was so mm-hmm. cheap. It was like commons and rares, right? So Hydra, that was forged in the barons. Yeah, that was the big. That <laughs> was the first. Ago. That was the first day of forged in the barons. That's that's basically where my it's only druid wins came from. It's been years. It's been years. Yeah. Years. Yeah, that's that's where my druid wins come from, and, and not not a lot. But like I said, I I played on on all three servers, so it does add up to probably like seven hundred wins, maybe total. But I mean, you you'd have a golden hero power at least. I would, but I don't. You don't. I don't. That's amazing. No. All right, is it, is it a personal, is it a personal quest for the Born to Be Wild community to just start like feeding Hydra just like Druid lists, Druid decks, like, play, play this, play this, give this a shot. Actually, but I, I will say, um, in the beginning, in the beginning, uh, before I, I did do the the token Druid, I did have a bunch of wins in the past from the whole uh, Yashiraj big Druid. Uh, yeah. that, that that existed. Uh, maybe the first like hundred ish wins were probably from that. That was the only other druid deck I enjoyed. Barnes and Tiasharaj. I'm so old. <laughs> I'm so old. That, I'm sheep. <laughs> that's that one sort of dates me, I suppose. <laughs> that was a fun deck. So anyway, that's that's druid. Hey sheep, how's the twist launch? <laughs> oh, that's oh, no. a funny question. So the twist launch has been um, fraught. Uh, so, for example, uh, Ben Hearthstone tweeted uh, yesterday on February 29th, um, twist format, new season starts in March, missing uh, some legacy set cards, FYI. So um, in the, uh, like, recognized uh issues post on on the official hearthstone forums um it said you know added 229 again yesterday from time of recording uh mm-hmm. some cards from the legacy set are missing from the twist eligible cards pool the team is investigating the issue so essentially if it was initially a basic card it was valid if it wasn't initially a basic card, but it was a quote-unquote expert card, 
um, or added subsequent to that, um, it was not in the card pool. So Savannah Hymane was not there. Uh, Ragnaros Rude. was not there. Also, there Rude. were a, right. <laughs> there was a lot missing, a lot, a lot missing from the legacy portion of that. It was kind of fixed around like noonish Mountain Time today. Um, mountain Time. <laughs> Another issue um, that was going on around then was um, that some people were u using some hack exploits. It, it wasn't just native to um, the uh, the the browser, the the client, but um, some people were playing with last seasons restrictions instead of this See, season's restrictions that's even the that's the biggest rude <laughs> one because that is completely intentional the other stuff is just you know coding issues whatever a bug but this is just malicious in all honesty and why would you do that really like if you think about it you really want to get banned you really want to lose yeah but you're gonna lose your cards you're gonna lose your account i i do not understand why anyone would have a valid account and use a hack or load a bot if if it's like your value. You're 14 and it's fun. <laughs> when, when, yeah, yeah, but it, yeah, after yeah, you've stolen dad's credit card and <laughs> that's how you bought all your packs. But it's oh no, the consequences of my actions. It's insane to me. If sure, if you started a new account and you decided you were gonna try this because you're having fun, whatever. I don't I don't condone or endorse it, but it, like. I don't want to be rude, but you got to rethink some things. If you've got an account with a collection and you're going to use a hack like this, it's, right. it's insanity. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. But I think a lot so, of the people doing it did not have a collection for a long time. And so this is just sort of borrowed money. It's like, start again. Yeah. yeah. I was largely positive, like, because the team was working on this, which is evident in the, yeah. in the fact that it has already been fixed. I was positive about that because they were actively working towards it. But to speak candidly and, and not, I mean, I'm speaking to, to the devs who listen. Hi. Um, <laughs> but, but you know, I, while they're working on it, I don't want to like be a jerk. Um, but this was disappointing. Like yeah. I woke up around 1am my time um, partially because, you know, it, 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 it's like Christmas, you know, it's a, yeah, yeah a new <laughs> format, especially this format, like where things change every day. Um, and it was super disappointing. I'm playing with basic cards. I'm, I'm, I'm not playing with like the, what was intended. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. there was so much that was missing. And it was fixed around like noon ish um, mountain time today. For those of you who are not in the NA time zones, that was pretty late in yeah. the day one yeah. meta for you. And the day one meta was only legacy, which is the only format that was affected by this glitch. And I, I understand that, that things slip through the cracks, but this is a big old, but this is a pretty big one. Like yeah. couldn't play with even a third of the cards that should have been available in this version of twist. I mean, I love twist twist is, is, with, with the last um, meta notwithstanding, Twist is super fun. D Twist is my primary game mode, truthfully. It, it's, it's what I go to both to have fun and to climb because I'm having fun and I just want to play mm -hmm. more, whether I'm in Legend or not. Like, typically I hit Legend and then it's time to goof around. And in Twist, it's like... I'm not just goofing around. I'm trying to find things that work. I'm trying to find things like refine things. I'm trying to find things that are fun and good and, and winning. And this took a lot of the wind out of my sails because 
I really want Twist to just be good and to be consistent and for people to play it and people to have fun and to in, in, increase the player base. And this just seemed like a thing that is kind of antithetical to all of that, especially in a format that is F2P unfriendly, uh, free to play unfriendly in general, you know, like legacy who has that people have been playing for a long time. Uh, who has like Leroy and not just like a core version of Leroy, but a legacy version of Leroy, not, not a ton of folks. I mean, like people who are playing wild probably, <laughs> but maybe not, maybe, you know? maybe not. Like when was the last time you saw Leroy in the list? Pirate rogue oh, in sunken it's... city. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. I'm old. I think, I, th- I think one of the the misses here really is that this new twist format that is constantly evolving every day was a real and still can be chance to show off this format to really spotlight it have streamers play your format and everybody mm-hmm. watch and think hey that's cool I want to hop in there right and then right out of the gate a bit of a dumpster fire right so that's that's the disappointing mm-hmm. part for me is if we want to if i don't want a 12 minute queue time like i was talking about before then this was the chance right and mm. i don't think it's too late like uh, stuff happens right so day one half the day sort of shot hopefully that's not going to really end it for everybody. And let's go into day two. I'm sh- well, Asia and EU at this point, day two is already up. So hopefully everything's Nax good. Out. Yeah. Hopefully everything's good with, with Nax going on over there. And uh, then we, then we can be fine. But yeah, sort of a bit of a hiccup in the beginning. Hopefully it didn't turn too many people off. I'm super excited. You, you gotta know that as soon as this episode is, over i'm gonna be trying to squeeze in we're like 14 we're like 14 forms of twist down the road by the time that the the the, the, the episode no i i mean that it's like a joke it's just like it's like multiple <laughs> parts have come out at that point right um i i i think a bigger theme and, and kind of to to mirror i think sheep's disappointment is it, it, it's getting to the point where if 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 twist was an employee, you start talking about whether or not the employee is still employed at the business that you're working at. Right. Because yeah. we've had enough. It's not that we don't like twist. It's it's has, and, and this is no, I, the devs can, can schedule balance when they can schedule balance. That's really pretty structured and on a timetable and not something they can, they can really change all that much, right? But it's not necessarily conducive to an active twist balance. I think that's fair, right? Mm-hmm. For how often it, mm-hmm. it typically has needed it in the past, <laughs> um, and so <laughs> a a, I'm a sorry, hiccup. I'm laughing at Ari more. <laughs> Ari more twist twist needs to be on a performance on a improvement plan. Improvement plan. It's, <laughs> it, it, <laughs> that's great, Ari more. I think I think Ari more <laughs> just made our episode title for us. Great, um, yep. and so. <laughs> And so, like, it, it, like, I, I like Twist as having Twist as an employee. Um, I have enjoyed Twist. I actually, unlike Sheep, enjoyed Last Meta. The reason why I stopped playing Last Meta is that by the time I was, like, queuing up after I'd done everything else I wanted to do, <laughs> I, was, I was stuck, like, I was stuck with queues that were so long it wasn't worth. It just wasn't worth it for me to keep to keep queuing in. I was like, I, I need to get like ranked games in. I, I'm I'm interested in hitting four hundred level four hundred on the pass. I can't be waiting two minutes, three minutes, four minutes in a dead format to to, to get a game because I did enjoy the meta and I, I I thought the meta was I thought it was very simplistic. Um, I maybe I would have enjoyed uh this pre patch meta where apparently it was dubbed by some as the lowest power level hearthstone ever i'm sure it's somebody's cup of tea so i i kind of enjoyed it too like tempo minions trade when do you go face very basics focused and and priest like aggro priest not shadow priest but aggro priest was like the tier one deck 
it was super fun because you had the um, Crimson Clergy, you had right. um, Northshire Cleric. Both of those were included in this. So you had draw and you had draw and you had ways to buff your draw. You you had divine spirit. You didn't have inner fire because of the glitch, but you had ways to buff <laughs> things. You, you had ways to like draw. You had ways to like play board and draw by playing board. And, and it was fun. I wish it was intentional. Yeah. Because it was fun. Yeah. And if it was intentional there and fun, then I would have no complaints about that, truthfully. But but it's like it's it's their fourth time they're late to work this week because they had to bring their cat to the hospital or something like that. And like you like them when they're in the office. But like there keeps being these little stumbles with Twist that keeps kind of like self sabotaging Twist. And this, mm-hmm. unfortunately, it's worth saying, it, it, it's worth mentioning because this is, the, you know, I think we're an honest podcast. This was kind of like the cherry on the icing on the cake in this situation. And we also mm-hmm. don't like piling on, right? Like, I I, I, right. I am so excited. I am honest. I, I'm honestly excited to play through some metas that I never got to experience firsthand. Yeah. Um, I'm not excited for today because I played classic. And, and mostly what right. I enjoyed about classic was beating the bots in classic. I did not really enjoy full classic because I sucked at classic. So I'll try <laughs> next tomorrow. Um, uh, but, but <laughs> pile uh, on, I think that's, I'd also that's a couple like days down the road, <laughs> a couple days down the road. Uh, I'd love to re-experience some of these metas though. I don't know how necessarily authentic that is with some of the buffs that we've got, but that's a different discussion mm-hmm. altogether. Um, but I, I want to see Twist succeed. But it's still at a uh, it's still at a point where um, I don't I don't I don't know I don't know sheep. What grade would you give Twist right now? As far as, like as the enthusiast, what grade would you give Twist's performance right now as a game mode? Um, though it has the option to get better. It has the option to get better. <sighs> right now, I'd give it a C. Like. It's passing, but just barely. It's not a C minus, you know, it's it's not a D plus. It's, you know, 75, 76, maybe 77. And right? I hope they keep it going. I hope it's a long term yeah. project, right? That that they keep experimenting yeah. and like hiccups or no, maybe like maybe <laughs> maybe maybe it becomes a meme. Maybe Twist is just a disaster for the end of time because it's their sandbox and this is where they're exper- experimenting and that's okay. But, but like, that's, 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 delete that's it like, like duels. <laughs> yeah, and and honestly, that's like this season, uh, this uh, this week of Tavern so Brawl. Duels. This week of Tavern Brawl is a meme because like it was super <laughs> solved super early. And you know what? I already have double digit wins. Uh, Tom Carter, friend of the show, already has over a hundred wins. It's insane. Um, <laughs> That's insane. Play the Tavern Brawl. Yeah, play, Tom the, play the Tavern Brawl. It's Bro. so much fun. It's a blast. Win on turn one. It's not even you, Yu-Gi-Oh. You can. I have. It's, I have won on Yu-Gi-Oh. turn one. Not on the coin. I've won on turn one. Not on the coin. It's possible. It's super fun. With it, the tavern brawl is anticipated to be one week. Yeah, yeah. But to say that someone like Tom Carter has over a hundred <laughs> wins shows they did something right. There are happy people, <laughs> right? Uh, and and I'm super happy with this this tavern brawl. Super I happy. Never play more than one win into tavern brawl uh, there's one been done. a couple times one where i was like that was cool and i did it again and these are very rare times let's let's mention for the people listening what what, what the tavern brawl is i'm sorry like it's mm-hmm. it's all minions are one mana one ones they aren't in your deck but once they enter the field of play once they enter your hand once they enter at, just th- there's an aura they become one mana one ones. so they have the same effect but they're one mana one ones and essentially the deck that um, Tom gave me that sheep then snagged from my stream and, and started I playing. have 24 wins with that and one with another. So I have 25 wins with this tavern brawl. It's it, super it fun. It's like a turbo version of Alex rogue where essentially if, if you draw your, 
whether it's whether it's Malagos, uh, there's a couple different minions, but like essentially Malagos gets you all your spells and your spells are coins and shadow steps. And if you have your curator, your curator draws beast, murloc, dragon. Oh, hey, there's my Alex. There's my uh, spirit of the shark. My spirit of the shark. Oh, yeah. Remember when they tagged that with this beast tag? Yeah. So uh -huh. <laughs> you drop that down. You've got all your spells from Malago. So you have not only your shadow steps, but also your shadow of demise. So you have three shadow steps, double battle cries, uh -huh. and you've got an Alex. Just go face. So, uh, uh -huh. As long as you get your, your, your order right. So like it, 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 it's really goofy. Uh -huh. And you get some people who are teching in like Boom Fistle Bully or Azalina or like just like goofy kind of stuff where it's like, yeah, it's 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 just sort of like a, it's just if you're a wild player and you enjoy wild, go go find the tavern brawl. I, I think we've posted the go to the Discord. We've posted the list it's in the Discord. It's a glimpse into the future of wild. <laughs> I mean, kind uh, if, it, of. if they give it's up, a blast. If they give up, it's yes. It's super OTK. It's super quick. It's super yeah. fun. It's kind of high rolly, but like again, like you said, glimpse into the future of wild? Question mark. It's it, not, and it's not Yu-Gi-Oh. It's not Yu-Gi-Oh no. because in Yu-Gi-Oh there are hand traps. In Yu-Gi-Oh, again, we, we learned on a previous, or I learned because I was ignorant to the fact that you can actually interact with your opponent on your turn on their turn uh -huh. so that you could stop them from doing these things. But that we, we don't have that luxury in Hearthstone. So uh, it's, it's just, sometimes it's fun to just pop off on turn one and just win and just be like, sorry, I rolled the nuts. Like it makes a great highlight reel. You get that dopamine rush. It's pretty sick. So I don't know. Well, obviously it's a hit, right? <laughs> yes. I yes. It, it, it is a hit. Um, how many times have you played it yourself, Shmeepy Daddy? Did you? I'm like, up to say he's got 25 wins. So I did a stream. I think it was Wednesday. I did a stream where I was just like, "Oh, new tavern brawl came out. Uh, I guess I'll do Vera Dex and maybe some brawl." And it turned into like, I'd say probably half hour of Vera Dex. And like two hours and fifteen or two hours and and thirty minutes of brawl, or just oh I my just gosh, playing. I was just spamming the brawl and like even when I was playing the viewer decks, I was just like I don't know chat. I kind of want to go play some more tavern brawl. <laughs> <laughs> and like amazing. said, no one ever like and that's... somebody. <laughs> I just want to go well, play like... some more tavern brawl. It's the kind of brawl where like you'd you'd watch Corb, you'd watch Corb play it. <clears throat> right when 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 Corb was streaming a little bit more regularly and, and and Corbett would pick it up and Corbett would be like can we cook this a little more can we make this a little faster can we can we can we do this a little better and then he you know he and he'd keep playing he'd playing as like he'd be like I can't believe I'm I'm queuing up a, a tavern brawl for the 30th time but that's kind of like that happens to us sometimes in tavern brawl where you just get this tavern brawl that just like it speaks to wild players and it's just like you know the sirens yeah. call of like chase the turn one otk <laughs> your opponent yeah. can't do anything make sure you emote it's just uh it, it, it it's a lot of fun and it makes some great highlights like if, if you're a content creator I, i'm not i i maybe like half a content creator i, I just enjoy streaming but um, and I'm not serious like to, about posting in my stuff, but like, like po you look at a highlight, you're like, oh, that looked cool. He played a bunch of cards and his opponent blew up. Like that's, that's, that's good content. I saw someone, I don't know who posted it on Twitter, but somebody posted a video from it and the comments were like, oh my gosh, how broken is wild though. This is insane. And then there's <laughs> subsequent comments underneath going, you know, chill. This is just a tavern this is a standard. It's, it's a, just it's, tavern brawl. Yeah. It, it's okay, but I don't mean to talk any shade on Tavern Brawl. Like, oh, just one and done, you know. Like, well, that's what we do because we want the card pack, and we usually play ranked, right, on on this podcast. And a lot mm -hmm, of people mm -hmm, that listen mm -hmm. do, and we like to know what are the best decks and everything like that. But there is an audience, obviously, for Tavern Brawl out there because oh. it still exists, right? It's it's one of the oldest modes in the game and it's still there. So it's, it's definitely a thing. And there's gotta be casual people that just love popping into the brawl and playing it. Like 
and it has and its own thing. MMR system. I think Tom's Tom's cues are up to like five or ten minutes. At some point, somebody was just Same. like, somebody, "When he's got a hundred <laughs> wins, yeah." Somebody was like, <laughs> "Somebody was just like." You're just queuing into people who want a free pack, and I'm like, this dude's playing Boom Pistol Bully and Druid. No, I, he no, he knows what he's doing. I'm gonna get him anyway. Like you don't realize <laughs> it, but like when you're queuing up your first tavern brawl, you're probably I'm not gonna say that you are because again, the longer you sit in queue, the more lenient the mm -hmm. system gets to allow you to queue into somebody else. But like I, I was queuing into you know I was queuing into people that knew what they were doing. And uh, but I mean, listen, you're a little disparaging of Tavern Brawl. I think that's fair because for for a, can we say the Tavern Brawl is on maintenance mode for the most part? Like it's kind of like I mean, it's yeah, but yeah, you get ones where it's like this is the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth time we've had this Tavern Brawl. It's just sort of set I, and I forget. Don't keep I don't keep track of it enough anymore. In all honesty to know when we got a new one. Right? Well, it's so on the front page again. It's on the front page again, and it glows on Wednesday, the first time you log in after they've changed it. And thank uh -huh. you for putting it back on the, the front page instead of not in modes. That it it When it disappeared from the front page, yes. in all honesty, I'm probably missing a year's worth of packs because I didn't play it. Right, like I'm missing I some, not a year's worth for sure. For, for sure, I missed some, <laughs> like, but not a, not a year's worth. I just, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, Tavern Brawl exists. Let's go. <laughs> like someone tell me, I don't click that button anymore. The only time I'd remember is, is that maybe I was bored and wanted to do some co solo content or try out a new deck. Oh I yeah, never tried, so I was gonna yeah, play yeah. it against the innkeeper, and I'd see it there. I'm like, oh yeah, oh, yeah, I, yeah. Do yeah, yeah. I can get a pack. Idiot. And meanwhile, that <laughs> that free stuff used to be like my biggest drive. And the oh man, I can get a pack here. And like I used to, I used to love Tavern Ball Brawl and stuff like that, which is why I love the events that they do now. For the mm -hmm. same reason, it's just like oh wow, look at all this free value I'm getting. Look at all this free stuff I'm getting. Um, and so it's like having that hidden is is scared. Sorry, should we? Mm -hmm. um, your name is Sheep. Sheep. What were you gonna say? Hi. Um, so friend of the show and developer um deck tech was trying to complete a quest the other day and i was playing a lot of tavern brawl deck tech wanted to to spec a, a a win to complete a quest my queue times were such that i had a 69 point something percent win rate I had 25 wins. <laughs> I, I I lost enough to get down to that 69% per, percent win rate. Deck Tech ended up stopping specking me because my my cues were so long because of the background <laughs> MMR. And he just couldn't, like, it, it, it was five, six, seven minutes before was he timing I could actually out? find. Yeah, I, I was timing <laughs> out. I stopped and it was like, oh, you disconnected. I hadn't disconnected. I was speaking within, um, like, not just Battle.net, but straight up in the client with Deck Tech. Oh, that's funny. Aramorn says, did he log bug? That's a pretty good one. That's a, that's a pretty good one. I'm not going to lie. Are we going to talk a little bots tonight? We should talk some bots. So bots in Hearthstone, the class frequency discussion uh, via the vicious syndicate report. Deck frequency data now includes the Asia server, but not because the bot problem in Hearthstone has been alleviated. It's because the America server has become almost as bad. So there's little point excluding one of the servers. It does make the ladder climb much easier for the average Hearthstone deck, but the botting plague might be the most serious problem currently facing the game. This is standard, We noticed the, the most recent ban wave, but bans yeah. need to come in more frequently and at a bigger scale for this issue to be dealt with effectively. Again, it's crazy. like Shmoopy Daddy mentioned, this is standard. This is yeah. like um, unholy DK. Wow. Well, well, it's funny. Uh, so I hit Standard Legend last month, late last month. And so I made my climb. I happened to see mm -hmm. a uh, a 
I guess you'd call it a, a, a dig rogue or a diggy diggy rogue or a diggy diggy hole rogue. I don't know if you like the song. Um, <laughs> I do. It's a good one. That, that um, Ron Mexico was playing. And I took the list and I flew up. And notably what I noticed was uh, once I passed Diamond 5, like I, I hit di- – I was in Diamond mm-hmm. 6. Once I hit Diamond 5, there is a noticeable bot belt from Diamond 5 to Diamond 3. Literally, if I cracked yeah. Diamond 3, I queued a human. If I lost, <laughs> dropped down to Diamond 4, I was back queuing into a bot. And the two decks that I saw the most often that were botted were Mech Rogue and Pirate Rogue. What? Interesting. Because the, especially in standard, the like meme, the the, the thematic (laughs) bot is not plague decay, but unholy death. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, and and they were very like, I mean it. It was the cadence. Mm -hmm. It was misplaying cards. Uh, The the mech rogues typically just went face. And so they would like tempo out cards, but they wouldn't value them at all. Like so, they'd tempo out. Um, oh my gosh, uh, three mana, two five, Inventor Boy, do a gadget or something like that. Like they just they chuck them out mm-hmm. there. They wouldn't try to get value. They would just chuck them out there. And if he stuck yeah. and he made a bunch of face damage, they'd point all the Mimiron, Thank you, Azalean. In yeah. Chat. And, it, and if he made a bunch of face damage, they'd point it all face. But like it was, it wasn't bad play from a human it was like empty headed play from a bot and did it with the pirate rogue mm-hmm. i'm like this looks exactly like a wild pirate rogue. i know what a bot looks like i play wild okay yeah i yeah, can sniff like, out when a you bot. say it's a bot it, it, it's a bot i don't have <laughs> any questions because i know you know what a bot looks <laughs> like, like that, that looks yeah. that looks like <laughs> bot like behavior but it was just so bizarre that it was just so localized in this band between diamond four diamond four and diamond five and then like again like you got one win out of it, like you were out of it, and then you lost, you were back in it, and then you lo- you won, you were out of it, <laughs> and like you were gonna win because it was a bot. So like I was like, you know, I did a little yo yo around T three, but if that's my experience late in the month, and I'm 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 a decent player, I had nine X, and I was climbing up. If that's my nice. experience, I can't imagine like a, a less experienced player trying to climb standard. We all know standard's a more popular format. If standard, I'm not going to say it's as bad as wild, right? I'm not going to say it's as bad as wild. If standard is approaching how bad wild was with the even shaman bots, that's really bad for the game. That's really saw, bad for the game. Really, really I've, I've bad seen a lot game. more than usual from standard players talking about it on Twitter. Uh, Guy Grumpy mm-hmm. had posted like, oh, this is sweet. <laughs> like I'm just versing all these <laughs> bots. <laughs> <laughs> like my climb was easy, right? But people are seeing different. It's a living. Bot, people are seeing different bot belts, right? Like you're saying that you saw it in a certain zone, Schmoopy Daddy, but then other people yeah. are seeing it maybe up until then, and then it goes away, kind of thing. It'll I don't know. Move, if, it'll move up like, as the it, as the month goes on. It, it should move. It's got to be the wave. Like all the, into each like other. Maybe the yeah. wave is all mm-hmm. like moving, or maybe sure. you're not quite in that MMR that you're not riding the wave you're a little behind and you're popping into the wave and out of the wave possibly sure sure not the best surfer you're not staying with it uh, nope. but <laughs> <laughs> you just got to get a little ahead of the wave i don't know or just I ride can, it you got, i can if barely you can swim high drive play wild the top <laughs> ride the whip but yeah it's definitely way more prevalent than it was before and standard is feeling it now uh, oh, yeah. the way that we would feel it in wild there was there was a point in time when i was playing on asia and it mm-hmm. was just the warrior bots were over and over and over and over again and i was like when am i gonna play a human right and the games were <laughs> long and it was frustrating because it was one of those armor up rope your turn style bots and that just drove me crazy but and then it wasn't even really hitting NA at that point in time, and it, it made its way, and then now it's in mm-hmm. standard. It's like a virus. Yeah. It's, yeah. I mean, it's always it's always been there to some extent. Like, I, I again, yeah. I have, through no fault of my own, 
found myself <clears> down <throat> at Silver MMR, and it's amazing how many bots you find at Silver that are just, they're not even like a hero, like they're not even a hero power pass. They're just a pass. They're just like, they <laughs> queue up. <laughs> they just queue up, and they're not even like, there's like the, just the lowest effort bot possible. And I report every one that I see. But like mm-hmm. Silver 10, I actually haven't, last time I've I've been down there, I didn't see too many of them. Maybe they they got caught up in the band wave, but like, probably hey, you'll, you'll, you'll see them. Um, Those are like beta bots. Somebody's like testing their programming. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah well, but, but again, I, if I'm allowed to just deviate ever so slightly, my favorite, my favorite bot story was this tax paladin that used to play wild called pure luck. And pure luck was a top 200 bot. Uh, mostly because pure luck was playing taxes paladin and, um, would just play at secrets. There was no rhyme or reason behind when it would play at secrets, but you'd still watch people try to play around them. It's like, oh, wait, I got to play around. Oh my God, I got to play around this. I got to play around that. And they wouldn't, and like, you know, they try to play around the secret and it wouldn't be, oh my God, it'd be something different because it's, it's a, it's a bot. It's not strategically thinking about anything. It's just executing a program. I have mana, let's spend it. And yeah. I watched pure luck play at like top 200, top 100 on streams like get me out corbett well i run into i run into pure luck later when the human takes over the human tanked it down to like rank 2500 i'm like i know you i've seen you you're still playing taxes paladin right and it's like you took over your account and you tanked your account. What were you? Just let the bot play. The bot's clearly better. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> it's clearly insane. better than you are. The bot is. The bot's doing great. I mean, he doesn't sleep. He doesn't eat. He just queues up infinite <laughs> games. But like, you're clearly throwing. Like, if you've tanked that much in that am- amount of time, it's just like, man, you don't know what's going on at all. You probably got up there and just like, what? Um, this is this is far and away worse than that. Where again, you have a bunch of accounts, and it, and it's not all necessarily to gain value for the account to get cards back. We have to keep in mind these are accounts that um, a, a big cultural thing. I'm not saying all these bots are coming from the Chinese community, but a big cultural thing in China is to. He is. I'm I'm saying it is a contributing factor because we had plenty of bots on NA before they came over. But it's a, it, in general, it's more accepted by that community base than it is um, from the Western community base. It's more prevalent. Just, just, just cheating in general. It's just, it's just more widely accepted or at least tolerated. Um, not necessarily like tabooed. I would say it's not tabooed as hard as it is in the Western, as in, in the Western societies. Hi, holy crap. All, all that said, all that said. Um, one thing that a lot of these counts are doing are basically looking for like this like golden arena run. So like you start a bot account, right? And you bought it and you gain gold from it. And then you you draft an arena draft. It sucks. You trash it. You do it again. This one's this one's insane. This arena draft is insane. You sell it to a streamer. You sell it to a CN streamer because these arena streamers it, it's it's a lot more it's like an event there it's it's arena it's not just sort of a side game mode that's sort of, sort of the backwater of hearthstone no, no no it's it's in the forefront for the chinese community so you sell that your account and that arena run to that streamer they stream the run right they own the account now because they paid you for it they didn't pay you a lot for it it was free when you made it um they discard the account rinse repeat and different individuals will make several of these accounts and rinse, repeat, and rinse, repeat. And again, how do you gain the most gold, the most experience, the most whatever progress on the track? You do it by botting ladder. So I, I, you can almost argue that a lot of these accounts that we do see on ladder, they might not even be trying to build up their collection. They're they're mostly trying to turn some sort of a profit from the game. And there's this sort of sub-economy that is attached to the economy of the game. Um, it sounds like you really know how this works, Schmoopy Daddy. Mm, yes, yes, yes. Mm. But you see, I've played too much Wild to know how to <laughs> bot anything. My uh, brain is like Swiss cheese. I kid, I kid. You could play me like a piccolo <laughs> if you blew in my ear. 
I'm not going to blow into your ear. <laughs> this seems like a good place to go for unrelated advice. <laughs> Unrelated advice with Electric Sheep City. <laughs> okay, sheep. You, I need you to. I need you to take this very seriously right now. I am a groundhog. Okay, how do I know it's spring? Like what, what speaks to you as like you go outside and you say, oh, wow, this is spring. Not like the typical things like, oh, I see. Da, 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 da. Like I, what really is the experience for you that tells you, hey, this is spring? Because I, I know I have that moment. It's college baseball, which is at this point well and truly underway. It's. Temperatures in the 60s to 70s, like throughout the day, which it was today. See, if I asked Hydra, it'd be like parkas or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I know when I start hearing like songbirds, like when I start recognizing some bird calls outside, I'm like, oh, okay. It's morning and the birds are chirping. Spring's coming. Spring's See, coming. you're... You're either more observant than I am, or... Wild's taking even more of a hold of me, and I'm like, the angels are speaking. Good answer. Mm. <laughs> the I greasy feather angels. This question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so what? My... Yeah. How do you know in the spring? So my wife insists that we sleep with the window <laughs> open, even during the winter, right? Sure. So, so our room gets freezing. Yeah, uh, but we, we we just put covers on, right? And so that that's she likes the like the cold outside the covers and the, the warm under. I've slept that way. I like the, that way too. The yeah. the rest of the house is warm. It's just like our bedroom is is frozen, it's, right? Sure. <laughs> I know that spring yeah. is coming when I'm no longer freezing my ass off. It's basically. <laughs> Wiser words have never been spoken, and you All heard right. that on. More to be. <laughs> Wild. <laughs>